um, Stanislav Boletsky is uh, a good colleague of mine who has been working uh, with Ihanzu for around the same amount of time as uh, me and uh, who's uh, done some fantastic work on narrative structures, the use of narratives uh, in Ihanzu and also just the language in general. Um, I've had the good fortune of meeting uh, Stanislav in person in uh, Dodoma uh, a few years uh, ago. And uh, yeah, we can we continue to sort of correspond about the language and uh, continue taking little chunks and steps forward in our, our analyses. Uh, so I uh, obviously when we said that we were going to be doing an Ihanzu symposium, I thought that an important ingredient would be uh, would be having Stanislav here uh, today. And uh, I'm also actually even more pleased that uh, he has a talk to uh, share uh, with us today. So I'm uh, I'm really excited. Uh, to uh, introduce uh, Stan's uh, talk, Ihanzu, Verbal Marking of Narrative Structures. So um, Stanislav, the floor is uh, yours. And thank you for uh, coming again. I'm really pleased uh, to see you here. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to share some of the outcomes of my research done in Tanzania. And thank you for the opportunity to discuss it and to, to see what you've been doing uh, during this semester. So by the way, I remember Bielefeld was one of the first big German cities I visited. So like almost 20 years ago. And I visited the university, I was brought there. So it was an excursion. Yeah. Like a bit of nostalgic memories, you know, <laughs> when I saw the University of the Bielefeld. Okay. At that time, I could not imagine having this talk after 20 years, you know, through Zoom about this language. You know, it's you never know what what, what comes. Now the future is like open. Uh, but thank you. Uh, let me start the presentation now. Uh, so I also prepared a brief introduction about the language, but I think. I can skip it, except maybe for the uh, descriptions mm. that I used as a basis for my research. So I started with a wonderful PhD thesis of uh, Masele, uh, which takes the data of Isanzo for comparative purposes. So there is a list of core and cultural vocabulary, and this list encompasses around 1,500 items and the author compares such list of the languages found in the F zone. So another resource was your and your uh, data that you collected to that um, by, by, by that time. Uh, and finally, I composed an article together with a colleague of mine from the University of Dodoma, a, a sketch, a grammatical sketch of Isanzo uh, after the first uh, field trip to Haydn. So I collected my data in Haydn. Um, this research was supported by the University of Dodoma and by the Endangered Language Fund. Uh, data collected in Haydn was used for different uh, research questions. So we, we tested different hypotheses on this data. And that piece of research that I'm presenting today uh, could be called narrative, um, the, the verbal, morphology, verbal, um, uh, verbal marking of narrative structures. And the research questions are what verbal morphology is characteristic for different parts of traditional, of a traditional narrative, and what discursive functions these morphemes fulfill. So the methods are text, collection text elicitation of narratives. So I, I have had not so many uh, stories, so I took 10 of them. And the analysis consists in morphological and semantic analysis from the narratological point of view, not, not very linguistic. So I work more with the theory of narration here. Uh, my consultants are quite uh, competent speakers of this language. The first consultant, the main consultant, Salim Shabani, is a native speaker of Ihanzo. The other consultant, Josefu Abdallah, 
is a speaker. So, so he speaks Isanzo, Isanzo is a second language. And uh, Josefo played a role of elicitation tool, so to say, uh, because uh, when you try to elicit a discourse, so you have to create the authentic environment for this piece of discourse, of discourse to be performed. Because I don't speak this language, I cannot, uh, I cannot be involved in a conversation. I cannot react in an appropriate way when I, I am told a story. So I decided to invite another speaker of this language, so he could assist the main native speaker uh, with this participation. So I could, I could see the participation structure because it's also important. Otherwise, uh, completely elicited texts are not, not, not that much authentic. So I was happy to have two uh, consultants who could perform these, you know, this narrative storytelling rituals because it's a ritual somehow to a certain extent. A little bit about the theoretical framework. So I took theory of oral narrative as a basis for this research based on the on the papers of Labov, of Berman, and of Todorov. Um, and the starting point uh, is a topical structure. So almost every narrative describes a process of the collapse of the old equilibrium and the construction of a new one. So first, at the beginning, we have an equilibrium, a harmonious coexistence of the characters. Then something happens, and the equilibrium, this harmony is broken. This is the most reportable event in the story. And then the author guides us through the construction, through the process of construction of the new equilibrium. So the end the resolution coda describes a new equilibrium. So this is very abstract concept. Um, then we go to the structures. So from the topical level to the structural level, and we can find like a correlation between these three components of the topical structure uh, with the narrative structures. So at the structural level, we can see that the story a uh, narrative, traditional narrative, starts with an abstract, like the announcement of the topic, the initiation of the talk, the submergence into the narrative world from the real one. Then it goes to orientation. And these two structures, they roughly correspond to the old equilibrium. Uh, the second component, complicating action, the story itself. Uh, it contains mundane events, triggering events, and the most reportable event. So th th this is, uh, roughly speaking, this is the story, the core of the story. And it corresponds to the collapse of the old equilibrium. And the third structure is resolution and coda. So how the new equilibrium is constructed and coda is the part of the narrative when the listeners are being brought back to the real world. So they, they, they have to leave the narrative world somehow. And there are some linguistic devices to do so. Um, there is also an optional element evaluation. So the the narrator, the speaker, may add some comments uh, on, on each and every component of these structures. So these um, structures are formally identifiable through the use of linguistic devices. So we can say, if we see a piece of discourse in whatever language, might, may, it might be German, it might be Swahili, it might be English, if we know this is a piece of a narrative, we can, based on the grammatical forms, we can see to which uh, narrative structure it belongs. So I thought to myself, maybe I have to find out the typical morphological uh, linguistic devices for Ihanzo, which serve to construct a narrative in this language, in this linguistic culture. So roughly these linguistic devices can be classified into three types, narrative or sequential clauses, evalu evaluative clauses or comments and informative elements. 
they might not be close, but they might be facts or background actions. So I decided to start with verbs because when we talk about actions, we, we talk about verbs, we talk about predicates. Of course, other parts of speech also correlate with these structures, but when we try to describe this correspondence, when we try to describe linguistic devices involved in a certain language and the construction of these structures, we have to start with verbs, of course. So this is the brief introduction. And another piece of introduction is verbal morphology in Ihanzo. Uh, this is what I know so far about the verbal morphology in this language. Uh, I'm thrilled, maybe I will know more about it after this symposium. So may maybe I will learn some more new morphemes from you, from, from, from your presentations. But so far, this is what I have. And um, oh, we, will, we will talk about the tense aspect mood markers, mostly. Uh, so there are two types of TAM markers in this language. The, uh, those which are placed before the prefix, before the subject marker, Ali Adzi, and those which are placed before the root. So this is TAM1, this very well known position that we find in Swahili, in other Bantu languages. So pre-prefixes are not, uh, cannot be found in all Bantu languages, but this TAM1 is characteristic for almost all of them. So what do we have here? The absence, the zero morpheme, uh, which is combined with the, with the morpheme that denotes perfective, ile ie. Then we have ku, which roughly corresponds to, to continuous, present continuous or past continuous, depending on the on other uh, verbal morphemes. So they're combined together. So a is past tense, remote past tense, o is future tense, ki is, um, is durative, ka is narrative past. So a ka is another morpheme for narrative past. Ika is another morpheme for narrative past and it's a, so about it, I'm not sure because I have not found this morpheme in my data so far in, in narratives. So some of the outcomes of the research. So first let's describe the equilibrium. So old equilibrium uh, is considered to be something as harmonious lifestyle. For example, friendship. So story starts with the description of a friendship between animals or between people. And this lifestyle is based on circular passage of time. This is the idea of repetitive time and future is the repetition of the past. And this equilibrium, the old equilibrium functions in this logic. So it's something like dream time in, 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 in Australian culture. Then something happens, this circle passage of time is broken, something un, unusual happens and harmony gets broken. So unexpected event comes with enormous consequences. So the old equilibrium is broken. New equilibrium is the world we know. It is disharmonious, there is death, there is betrayal and so on. And sometimes there is etiology. Etiology is the uh, so naive understanding of the phenomenon, of the natural phenomenon. Na na so naive, um, naive explanation of the natural phenomena. So like snake, has no legs because then this, this, the story is based on the, the story serves as an explanation because why a snake has no legs. Yeah? And I could say, 
So these, these uh, components are marked. They are grammatically marked. So all the equilibrium is marked by I or Ali or shortened to A by this morpheme. And I would call it a discontinuous past. And it situates the listener in the remote, very remote past, in the mystical past, in the dream time. So I found this morpheme at the beginning of the story. So it's never found in the main part of the story. And sometimes it is found in the resolution part, but mostly it is used to open the narration, to describe this old equilibrium that functioned as a closed system, as a predictable system, as a reliable system. And of course it does not exist anymore. So this past IE form separates us completely from that time. So in these examples, Sungura Natembo Valiko Marafikiest. So the, the elephant and the hare, the rabbit, used to be friends. Uh, and they went together to the human. To, to... So they, they used to go to the field of a certain person to eat vegetables. So this is the equilibrium. This is what they were doing regularly. And there was no problem with it. Uh, the harmony gets broken in this story when the rabbit decides to go to that field on his own. So he breaks the rule. He is not waiting for the elephants to accompany him. He decided to go alone. This is the the event that starts. Uh, the, the, the collapse of the old equilibrium. And we can see it is marked by perfective. So it's not IE past, it is perfective. And of course, perfective implies the idea of, of an action that happened once and that was completed. So he broke the circular model of the universe at that time. Um, yes, and the main main part of the story is marked with K, with K forms, A, K, I, K, or K, plain K forms. So these are sequential clauses, narrative clauses. So K forms imply that it's not the first uh, action in the series of action. It might be second, third, and so on, but it's never the first one. So if there is ka, there is something before it. It's like a continuation of a triggering event. And the new equilibrium, so by the way, the, the, the collapse of the old equilibrium uh, is marked with ka as well. So there is no special grammar for this collapse. So the same past, marker is used, the same aspect marker is used. And the new equilibrium is marked by, I would say by habitual tense. So this is the, the description and the explanation of the world we live, the world we know. So that's why the, the marking is, uh, the, 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 the verb refers to the current moment. This is present, can, uh, present habitual. Uh, so the past, the, 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 the verb forms in A and B, I would call discontinuous past. The form in C is perfective. The form in D is consecutive or narrative car. The form in E is habitual, present habitual. So I, I, I hope I, I was able to show you that different uh, structures are using different grammar, are using different verbal morphemes. And on the next slides, I will discuss 
these parts of the narrative in more details. So let us start, uh, let us start with abstract. Uh, abstract is embodied in the preceding course of interaction. So it should contain request for storytelling. Uh, topic is announced, attention is tested with the signals of active listening like uh -huh, uh -huh. participants submerge in the narrative world. And in this short video, you can see that this Bibi, like this grandmother, is starting a story. She repeats the first lines and the children reply with this uh -huh, with the signals of active listening. And then someone asks something, uh, it's not related to the story. She comes back to the real world, she replies to this question, then she goes back to the narrative world and she takes the children deep into this narration. So this is like a ritual, but I must confess this data comes from another language. It comes from Gogo, not from Ihanzo. But I hope, so I think this uh, ritual is similar. This is like the, 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 the general logic of coming from the real world to the narrative world. So they go step by step into the narration and they repeat the same lines until the narrator is convinced the listeners are listening attentively. So the next structure is orientation. Uh, this is the description of the place, time and characters before the old equilibrium collapsed. So these are not narrative clauses, these are informative clauses. So good old times are marked with IE, IE, R, morphemes, discontinuous past. Um, they're used to show repetitive cycles, repetitive actions in the disconnected past. An example here, Apopakali, Himba Ningombe, Akihimba Shue, Itaiti. It's a long time ago, uh, the lion and the cow used to be friends. So this time, I time, means it's not valid in the real time. So whatever is marked with I is no longer, um, is no longer, does not, does not longer exist. It belongs to the past completely. Repetition is expressed by key forms, durative and by habitual forms. So with zero TAM1, uh, and the final A vowel. Ingombe ai lekelwa yana akiginsa palombe koke so kela. So the cow let the children play. Ingombe idema mafwa. So the cow went to eat grass or leaves. So this is the description of the old equilibrium. Then at a certain point, a triggering event comes. This is the beginning of complicating action. Um, here we can see a narrative or consecutive clauses. So the triggering action is, ex is using the ARCA or plain car forms or perfective. Uh, so the rabbit went on his own to find uh, this karanga nuts, peanuts. So here we can see the perfective and then the car form. So the, the, the main part of the story starts with perfective. It's like a point, a dot in the old equilibrium. So starting from this Wendile, the old equilibrium does not exist. So a transition starts. Uh, 
Atolikelwa Yanangam Siko E. One day, lion went to find meat, and the cow let the children play like she did it other days, like it was a habit. Uh, here we can see that the triggering event uh, is marked with aka or ka narrative tense. Mm. And we can compare it with a very similar phrase from the orientation phase to be. In Gombe, I like Vayana, Akiginsa, Palomba, Kokesokela. So the cow let the children play. So the cow used let children play. So we can see the difference in grammar, we can see the difference in morphology. So the, the action is the same, but it serves the other purpose now. Now it is a triggering event and it is marked with ka. Before it was a habitual event and it was marked with I tense. So the next structure is complicating action. This is the elaboration of the story and it consists of narrative clause of informational clause if or and or evaluation clause. A triggering event opens a series of subordinate narrative clauses, which may be accompanied by informative and or evaluative clauses. A subordinate narrative clause can be marked by ka, aka, or eka infixes. Panaka suka myangala wekamuanga omokola mogonda wata. After Rabbit came back, he met the owner of the field. Mangala wekam wa nemokola mogonda. And the rabbit was caught by the owner of the field. So it seems like Eka form marks non first predicates on the same subject. So I, I, in my data, I couldn't find echo form uh, in the very first action in a series of action. So it never starts a story. It can be found only as a continuation of the story with the same subject. When the subject is changed, then aka or ka form is used. Um, informative clause. So they are inserted into the story. They accompany the narrative clause. This is um, narration can be supplemented with informational clauses. If there is a need to mention preceding actions, um, the morphology used is a, a, so past tense with the final vowel a or perfective with ile. So if there is a need to mention preceding actions which haven't been mentioned before, or if there is a need to mention projective actions, so something that supposed to happen in the future. So adzi is used and o is used. So the difference between these two morphemes is, so far I can say, adzi is unspecified future. So it's a future that has no a certain date like future that we can say someday, one day it will happen, or marks future that is certain to happen. If someone has a certain plan to do, so he or she will use this or form. Uh, also informative clauses contain direct or reported speech. So in these fairy tales, direct speech is used to to introduce imperatives, optative forms, hypotheticals, and so on. And there's some examples. Panakasuka myangala weka mohanga omokola mogonda wata. So after the rabbit came back, he found 
the owner of the field. So this is not very, uh, it's not a very accurate translation because in the original it is said that the owner of the field already came to the field. So what the, this is the past tense with a. So he came to the field, but this action is not a part of the story. So it happened somehow in the, in the background. That's why this action is not marked by ka. It is marked by a. Omosongo yokombe akaze wapatile moomba muenzoka paki gaye hatu. So this woman, this is a story about a woman and a snake and python. Uh, a woman befriended a snake of the kind of python uh, who lived in a cave. Akadzawapatile, this is a compound form with ka narrative morpheme and um, and perfective. So again, uh, this is a combination of a narrative clause, akadze, and background action, description of the background action, wapatile. So this is a, uh, this example comes from a story about two birds who used to be friends, but then because of unknown reason, they became enemies and they tried to bewitch each other. And of course they wished bad luck to each other. So uh, this is the direct speech. Uh, so one bird says to the other, so one day there will be flood which takes away your eggs from the nest. So this is the future tense, Adzi this unspecified future. The other example, Omosongo Akamosokilia Adzawatema Omogolo Netulenda Ogeni Wasaga Omoimba So we may kill it. This is a story about the uh, about the rabbit and the Yes, about the rabbit and, and the chicken. Yes, the hen. They mm. used to be friends, but, but one day, so the, 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 the hen decided to, yes, uh, he decided to pretend uh, to leave the, the head. The, the wife of this bird told the, the rabbit that the husband lost a leg and the head. So rabbit decided to repeat it and he died. So here we also can see the actions that took part outside of the main plot. So these actions happened in the background. And the last example is direct speech with the future event. No kutale konyama nido wanduye. So I will bring you enough food. So th this is the phrase the rabbit says to hungry hyena who wants to eat him. So he says, I am a small animal, you will not be satisfied. So I will bring you someone who is bigger so you can eat the other animal. So this is the future tense, the immediate future tense. So the climax, the most deportable event, the conflict, the point where the equilibrium is broken. So it is marked by car forms. I expected some special grammar to be used here, some special morphemes, but there is nothing special from the morphological point of view. These events are marked with ka forms. And kanga eka hongwa nankulo emakola. Kanga lost the competition to the dove. 
So there's two birds who bewitched each other. So Kanga, the Guinea fall, won the competition. Ehemba pena ikula ololi olo, ehemba ikasuka emilu. When the lion heard the sound, he ran away. So the parents did not believe the words of Bobo. They heard from their son. So the son was telling them that there is a lion outside waiting for them to go out. So there was a danger on the There was a danger waiting for them, so they did not believe him. So this is the most reportable event in that story. Uh, like triggering events, most reportable events are marked with cuff forms and never with a cuff forms. So that might be the difference. That that small um, difference might be characteristic for the climax for the most reportable events. So they cannot be marked with a cuff. They are always marked with cuff. Resolution. So this is the description of the new equilibrium. Uh, new equilibrium may be situated in the narrative world and thus marked with ka forms or in the real world and marked with ali and perfective. Modao ke dao dao himba akamodia of pangu. Next morning, the lion ate the boy. Next morning, the lion killed the boy. So this is like the new equilibrium. So the, the main character died. And it belonged to the narrative world. So there is no piece of wisdom following from the story. At least I, 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 have it, uh, I don't have it in my data. Maybe there are some other narrators who provide this uh, a piece of wisdom or a lesson that brings uh, the resolution into the real world, but in my data there is no. And the grammar which is used says about it. So it belongs only to the story. It does not belong to the here and now. Uh, another example, I Manile Naleo. So until today, they are enemies, those birds. So there is another grammar here. We can see the this morpheme that marks distant past, discontinuous past, and the perfective. And I understand this construction in the way that something that happened long time ago is still valid until today, until now. So this is the perfective past, uh, part that makes it valid here and now. The cow and the lion uh, are enemies until today because uh, the calf killed the, 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 the lion's child. Simbam Toto. So again, here we have a combination of Ali, distant past and perfective. And this is how the world is now. So before these two kinds, these two animals used to be friends, but this conflict happened in the distant past and the equilibrium has changed. And this change is still valid until today. That's where perfective is used. Cool down. Uh, this structure serves to return the listener from the narrative reality into the, the real world. Coda contains a performative expression with A, completed past, or K forms, the last narrative clause, that closes the storytelling. An optional comment stating lesson or a piece of advice with optative forms of the verb, and an optional etiology with habitual verbal forms. The story has finished. So there is no more story. This is the last 
sentence. This is the last clause in the story. So hapo refers to the here and now. So the listeners are brought back to the real world with this expression. So the friendship, um, this is a piece of advice, a piece of wisdom, a lesson, moral lesson from the story. Uh, friendship should not be based on this Should not be should not be based on the fake things. I would say, uh, mm -hmm. so we can see the habitual form, uh, the optative form. Ye undendo nilelo mpiti elumana ulaku wakwe. So this is why the hyena. Um, this is why the hyena cries when he uh, when it feels hunger when it's hungry. So the form is habitual, habitual present. So the, the, the story uh, stops here, and this is the phrase with which I would love to stop my talk. Thank you for the attention and I'm waiting for the questions. Thank you very much, Stanislav, for uh, this. Uh, I see we have, we can probably have a couple minutes for questions, yeah. Um, I, I, need to say, I need to say that um, I, I'm really excited uh, by the data that you laid out and the analysis uh, and the fact that it's very much based in the language as used. Um, and I think I'm most excited by the prospect of, of, you know, that this is sort of a step forward to the generalizability of the findings here. Uh, you know, the, the ability for us to find more precise labels for these morphemes. Because I know that for me, I'm, I, you know, I tend to be intentionally vague with when I encounter these morphemes. Uh, so I think it's really exciting that from your data, you sort of give us a way forward to uh, identify what, what, you know, in a more precise way and a more sort of from a language internal perspective, what these morphemes might be. So that's really exciting. My question for you, Stanislav, is. Do we see, or maybe should we expect to see the same usage of these tense aspect mood morphemes in other genres, such as procedural discourse, songs, conversations, etc.? What do you think or feel about that? Mm, I would say I would expect the same use, but I'm not sure because traditional narrative is a special kind of text. And we can see that this, I'm not sure about this I form. Maybe it is also used in spoken language. Maybe not. Maybe it is used only in traditional narrative because I could see a strong correspondence between this I and the old equilibrium, the old you know, discontinuous past. Right. So, that would be interesting to test this hypothesis. So next steps are to uh, are to look at other uh, speech genres as well. But thank you um, for that, Stanislav. Does anybody uh, have any questions in the uh, audience or any comments, thoughts? Yes, Yuta. Yes, thank you very much. I'm also interested in this uh, IE because that sounded like a very specific morpheme um, putting things like in the distant past and at the same time being closed off somehow or no longer valid. But then in the end, you said uh, that you also get it in the resolution. Um, and there it's combined um, with a perfective marker and you get sort of a different interpretation. If I got this right. Um, can you say a bit more about this interaction of IE with the um, 
with the other thumb markers? Yes, so, so far I, I could see this eye serves for locating an action in the remote past, in that mystical past. But perfective uh, makes it still valid. So something got broken and it is still broken. So this is the idea. Something got broken long time ago and it is not fixed and it will not be fixed. And it is the way we know it in this world. Very interesting. I think all that's left is uh, to thank our opening talk uh, for a yeah, really interesting and uh, useful uh, analysis. And thank you again for sharing this material with us, Stanislav. Um, I'm really excited to see uh, the next steps. Uh, it's a great contribution. And uh, yeah, really, uh, really great to uh, have your talk today. So thank you very much.